When we talk about smell, one of the other smells that we have to stop and think about is cigarette smell and the smell of weed. I know there are a lot of people that are experimenting and they're having fun and it's their home. They can do whatever they want in it. But at the last minute, if you have a showing of the house, we have to do something with that smell. And that becomes a problem when the house just reeks. And of course, as a house cleaner, we're dealing with other things. We're dealing with the nicotine stains that are on the blinds and the windows and in the drapery and the fabrics and all that stuff. But the thing that we have to consider is if you do smoke inside your house or if you vape or if you do weed or something like that, the smells as strong as they are, are going to be in the drapery and the fabrics and the upholstery where it can trap a smell. I know a lot of people in the moving process have had to literally repaint and do like a paint sealer so that it will seal off that smell. And they got to do the whole entire house and disinfect it and all that stuff to get rid of that smell. So the smoking in a perfect world, no one would smoke inside their house, but it's not a perfect world. Some people do. And so we use an ozone generator. And for those of you that are not familiar with an ozone generator, we use the ozone generator for a couple of things, because if we come into a house, the big issues that we're dealing with are going to be the mold, the mildew, the pet smells, and the cigarette. Okay. Those are the big smells that we're going to deal with when we try to renovate a house and get it ready for a new home buyer. All right. The next thing I have is a great big old bath towel. And you say, what is the bath towel for? Well, we're going to use ozone for this project. And this is an ozone generator right here. The ozone has three oxygen atoms that are connected to it. So it's a molecule of a light blue gas and ozone is also known as smog. And so what's going to happen with this ozone generator is we're going to have a lot of fumes inside the bathroom. So we're going to let ozone go into the air and create a pocket of ozone around my bathroom. And then it's going to decompose all of the smell. And then once all the fumes and all the smells are gone, then we're going to go back in and we're going to clean the bathroom. Okay. So we're going to spray it first. We're going to leave for about an hour and a half. That's where this bath towel comes in. So what I'm going to do in order to keep ozone and bleach fumes from circulating throughout the house, we're going to turn off the air conditioning and we're going to turn off the heat and we're going to turn off the ventilation. So we're just going to create a packet of ozone inside the bathroom. All right. I don't want any person, plant or pet inside my ozone chamber. So I'm going to take my bath towel and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to roll it sideways and I'm going to plant it below the bottom of the door. And that way, when I close the bathroom doors and it's on the bottom of the door, no ozone can escape. And I'm going to turn the ozone machine on. I'll leave links in the show notes to all this stuff so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And you can also see the kind of ozone generator that I have. This is perfect for a master bath. It has a timer on it and I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes of ozone. Then once the ozone dies down, I'm going to let it set for about an hour. And that way, all the ozone can disintegrate out of the air. Okay. But we use the ozone generator a lot. And the ozone generator is small. I mean, it's this big. Okay. So it's about the size of my head, which is not very big at all. And it has ceramic plates in it. I forget what it is, but it'll go for a very long time before you have to replace the ceramic plates. And the ceramic plates can be replaced. So we've never replaced them. In all the years that we've been using these, we've never replaced them yet, and it still works. So the secret is, again, no plants, no people, and no pets, right? It is not safe for to have ozone while they're around. So what we do is if you're going to be at home, and we do this all the time, we make sure that we turn off the air conditioning unit because we don't want air circulating through the house if there's ozone going in one of the rooms of the house. We also have vent covers that are magnetic vent covers that will smack over the vent so that no air escapes while we're doing the ozone process. That way, if there are pets in the house, if there are people in the house and you're cleaning the house, you don't run the risk of somebody woofing that in and then making their lungs or their respiratory system sad, right? So the ideal situation is to do it while somebody's on vacation or if the family's going to be out shopping or at the fair for the day or however they're going to spend the day, then the cleaning company can come in and they can do all that. And then it has the chance for the ozone to die down. But the ozone is fantastic for things like cooking. Cooking is a really tough topic for us because this is garlic. I couldn't find a picture to show you of curry, but there are some foods that smell so strong that are not a flavor or scent for everyone. The smell of garlic is not a favorite smell of mine. 
I know that when I smell garlic, it kind of makes me gag. And I take garlic every day. I take like odorless garlic capsules. But if I were to just eat raw garlic or if you're approaching the house and there's garlic smell, like lots of people where I live will plant garlic out in their yards and in their flower beds because it keeps the deer away. And there are a lot of wild deer that come through and they eat up all the plants. And so they plant garlic in their house, in their yard. And then you approach the house and it's like, whoa, just knocks you out, right? So if you have one of these houses where, and I promise this has happened, you guys are going to know the smell, burnt popcorn. It's just got this nasty, pungent smell to it. Like, wow, what just happened? Or burnt pizza. The, the smell is so strong. You have to open the, the windows because like there's the smog that comes through and you just can't breathe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's nasty. And so the ozone works perfect for that, right? So you're going to make sure that again, no pets, no people and no plants. So just to remind you of that. But the ozone machines, they're like 70 bucks or a hundred bucks. They're, it, you get the whole entire kit for less than a hundred bucks. And for a professional cleaning service, we use that a lot. And if you are a family that uses lots of strong cooking smells and you're going to put your home on the market, this might be a great investment for you. I don't know if you can pick up one at a used marketplace, but even if you could, chances are it's got years left on it for the ceramic plates because people don't use them as much as it's not an everyday product. But as a professional cleaning service, we use them all the time. And also fire and flood restoration companies use them all the time to get rid of the smell of the mold and the mildew that you run into when you're talking about other areas of your home. This is poor ventilation. And the poor ventilation is something that I want us to take a look at as well, because while this is not a smell, it brings in a smell. It's that leaky, moist ventilation issue where you're going to get a mildewy type smell. It's kind of just a rank smell that doesn't really smell like anything in particular other than it smells like it's been raining outside. And again, this is very typical of homes that have overgrown with trees where there's not a lot of ventilation and the sun can't get through the house and it can't let the house air out. And a lot of times the telltale signs as you're approaching a house, you'll see on the ridges of the windows, like the windows will have a little brick ridge to them. There will be moss and mold growing on those ridges just because it's, again, there's nowhere for it to go. And so if you're approaching a house, even as professional house cleaners, if we approach a house, and I hate to say this, but if you approach a house and you see that there's mold on the outside on the windows, that suggests condensation on the windows on the inside, mold, mildew. We've got a whole bunch of stuff we got to deal with. Your price just went up. And it's not that we're trying to rip people off. It's just that we have so much more maintenance and we got to bring in ozone machines and we got to bring in strong chemicals to try to then knock that out so that you do have a clean and sanitary house. Yeah, it's so, so true. People walk in and they're like, oh, this is so gross. Oh, this would cost so much money. In people's minds, a lot of those costs are so much bigger than they actually are. And just having those little details done, it makes all the difference. I have had clients ask me to take an extra 10 grand off the offer price just for seeing things like that because they have no idea what it will cost. They have no idea what kind of crews they will need or what kind of people or if it's major or minor, they have no idea. They're just looking at it going, oh, that looks gross. Um, get us some more money. It's not that it costs so much money, but it does. By the time you bring in a remediation company and they bring in all the tools that they need in order to remove, if mildew has turned into mold in your house, it's actually a sand blasting process where they've got these great big machines where they bring in, it's like dry ice and they have to dry ice the mold off because otherwise it can't grow back. If they just bleach it down or something, yet yeah, it looks like it's gone, but it comes right back after a minute because they haven't removed the source of it. And so what happens when you call like a mitigator and they come out and they do a moisture test, they'll go up in your attic, they'll go down in your crawl space, and then they will test the moisture in all the different places. And they will pinpoint exactly, like they have these little heat meters where they will go inside a room of a house and it will turn red or yellow, depending on how much moisture is in the room. And then they'll say, okay, behind these walls, we've got mold behind these walls. And you're like, I don't see any mold. And then when they pop through the walls, because they'll, they'll do all this kind of stuff because they've got to get to it in order to clean, you'll see the mold and you're like, oh my goodness, it almost ate through my walls, right? It's a serious thing. So when you start seeing this, it is into the tens of thousands of dollars. 
And I know we were talking about the ozone machine. The ozone machine is not expensive, but the service that's going to come and going to do the ozone machines for you, they're very expensive. I know in the Airbnb industry, we get a lot of Airbnb cleans. If someone has been smoking, especially if they've been smoking weed, because that's a really strong smell, it oftentimes it's like $500, $500 extra just to remove that smell from the house. And that's like the average price. And so while you thought you stayed somewhere for the night for 69 bucks or something, it's now 569 for you because you smoked weed in their house, right? So it is very expensive. And again, the smells get trapped inside the fabrics and the drapery and the tapestries on the walls and oil paintings. I mean, it's tough to try to remove some of those smells. And so the smells that linger are those trapped smells that are not broken down with the ozone, which is one of the reasons we use the ozone machine, because it actually eats up that extra molecule. So that's the reason why it's so expensive.